I am Reverend Dr. Henry Lee Bates, and this morning our Way to a Wonderful Life message is titled, Name It and Claim It. Name It and Claim It. So as we start thinking about what it is that we want to have, what we want to do, what we want to be, what our life is all about, so many times people get stuck because they get isolated in their mind from what's real about life. You know, so many times people believe things even though they don't have the whole picture of what it is that they're believing. And if they had the whole picture, if they go deeper in their understanding, deeper in their awareness of what it is that they believe, they would find that they really don't believe it at all. They really don't believe it at all. You know, politicians are really good at taking advantage of what people, people believe on the surface mind, but they can't take us too, too much deeper in our mind for, to convince us of anything if we are using God intelligence, God's, God's spirit in our mind and our heart and our soul to, to come to conclusions that are, have an intelligent result too often, too often. Not all, not all politicians are bad. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that any more than all preachers are wrong or ministers are wrong. You know, the, there was a comedian, entertainer, John Oliver, had a whole thing on, on televangelists, and all these people were making fun of the televangelists and saying how awful they were. It was on the Huffington Post this morning. It was on uh, Facebook yesterday. And it's like, you know, it's real easy to throw stones at people when you only know, when you only have a little evidence of something that you think is not right. But when you go to that deeper level in your mind and a deeper level of understanding and knowledge about something, then you find that, you know, there's all, always more than one way to look at anything. Just as the great Shakespeare wrote, nothing is good or bad, but thinking makes it so. Nothing is good or bad, but thinking is, makes it so. We live in that universe of goodness. God's infinite spirit has created a wonderful, beautiful universe in which we can all live and we can all thrive and survive and, and live to the fullness of life if we get our mind in tune with the infinite. Let's look at these words from the book of Isaiah. This is from Isaiah 55, 10 through 11. It's from the Holy Bible, the English Standard Version. You know, there's about 50-some versions of the Holy Bible. This is from the English <coughs> Standard Version. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I send it. So we look at those words and we realize that Isaiah is telling us that we have to talk to God, we have to say to God, we have to, to take God's inherent liberty to, to choose that God has given us and allow ourselves to, to name what it is that we want. Name it and know that it comes back to us. Say that word, I am, I am. That, that word is, denotes the power of God within each and every one of us. It also denotes the liberty, the inherent liberty that God has given us to choose how we're to experience this thing called life. No one could say I am for us, no one. We can only do it. And whatever words follow that I am, I can say I am prosperous, I am healthy, I am wise, I am loving, I am, I am feeling a great deep sense of a peace within myself. Or I can say, oh, I am poor and sick and weak and unhappy. Whatever it is, we're going to get it to some degree, no matter what it is that's going on in the rest of our life. If we just keep ourselves in tune with the infinite, and allow ourselves to realize that God, God, infinite presence, is always seeking to work all things to our good if we let him, if we let him. And that him means spirit, intelligence, power. There are disagreements as to whether Isaiah was a prophet or a mystic, but what we do know from the writings attributed to him is that he was highly intelligent. His revelations of truth about God and our relationship to the law of God could only have been drawn into his mind from the one intelligence, the one spirit, that is from the, the mind of God. 
From these simple words from the ancient scripture, he is revealing to us the way in which we too can draw from the infinite invisible that which we want to experience. His so shall my word implies a trust and confidence in the infinite willingness to give to us an absolute conviction of truth. Isaiah's wisdom was written 700 to 750 years before the birth of Jesus, and although there are those who believe that he prophesied the experiences of Jesus, I would doubt that this is the truth. We can read in Isaiah 43:11, one of the most profound mystical statements, I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. And in these simple words so often ignored by people and by religion is pure mysticism, truth revealed through man by pure spirit. Our conclusion must be that the infinite has infinitely individualized itself within everyone and has infinite ways in which to give to us, prosper us, supply us, etc. I, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no other. Then we go back to those words. It shall not return unto me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and shall succeed in the thing for which I send it. So I am is the nature of God that we must take into our own mind. I am the notes, the power, the intelligence, the spirit of God, and we must take that I am into our mind uh, as words of purpose, as words of, of a definite, specific idea in how we're going to experience life. Are we going to live it fully and completely? Are we going to live it with enthusiasm? Are we going to live it with a feeling of success and prosperity and joy and happiness? Or are we going to live it always thinking about what we don't have and keep naming what we don't have? Because if we keep naming what we don't have, we're going to get more of what we don't have. Now, the mastermind Jesus taught that our faith is powerful but we must recognize that it is and identify with the good that we desire to have, to do, and to be. Ask and you shall receive implies that we are to name it and claim it. And know that our faith in the law of God will not fail to bring it forth into our experience. Isaiah uses the, the illustration from nature to teach us that in the words of Jesus, As you sow, so shall you reap. As you sow, so shall you reap. And Isaiah says, as the, <clears throat> For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I send it. So he's doing the same thing as Jesus. Say, so look to nature, look to nature and realize that God's laws, God's intelligence permeates the universe. It's everywhere present, omnipresent. Learn to use that law. Learn to use it. No one can escape this universal, omnipotent, and omnipresent law that always gives us the results that we believe it will. A mystical Ernest Holmes calls it the law of attraction. And he called it that in 1926. Robert Collier writes in his classic book, The Secret of the Ages, prosperity is not limited to time or place. It manifests when and where there is consciousness to establish it. It is attracted to the consciousness that is free from worry, free from strain, and free from tension. Concentrate and think upon things that you want, not on things which you ought not to have. Think of abundance, of opulence, of plenty, of position, of harmony and growth. If you do not outwardly see abundance, know that you have it within, and that in due time it will manifest itself. The greatest shortcut to prosperity is to live it. Prosperity attracts, poverty repels. The secret of prosperity lies in so vividly imaging it in your own mind that you literally exude prosperity. You feel prosperous, you look prosperous, and the result is that before long, you are prosperous. You are prosperous. So we have to get into the feeling of it, as the great Reverend Ike would say. 
And Robert Collier obviously is writing to the same same idea or concept. The secret of prosperity lies in so vividly imaging it in your own mind or thinking it that you literally exude prosperity. You feel prosperous, you look prosperous, and the result is that before long you are prosperous. We don't need no hard times to enjoy the good times. We have a good we can have a good time, but let's believe it. But let's believe it. We can we can have the good times if we believe it. So we don't need any hard times to enjoy the good times. So quit talking about how hard life was and start thinking about how life, how good life is. Remember, God is all about the isness, isness, the is possible, the is now unfolding into our lives a greater thing. So Robert Collier's focus on it manifests when and where there is consciousness to establish it takes it right back to us. Throughout the ancient scriptures and in the teachings of the Mastermind Jesus, we find so much that supports us in establishing the consciousness of prosperity. Jesus said, all that the Father hath is mine, but we must ask for that which we want. And this means to claim it. Ask in the Aramaic language of Jesus means to claim it. And as Collier tells us to vividly image it in our mind, we can know that we must establish the thing we want first in our mind. First in our mind. What do we lack? Whatever it is, we must stop believing that we lack it and begin to establish in our mind that we have it. We must identify with it so vividly in our mind that we are in possession of it mentally. Mentally. Now, there are those who will tell us to make a, per a mental picture of it. But for some of us, this is not enough. We must take the time to see ourselves having it, living it, <clears throat> living with it, touching it, driving it, enjoying it, loving it, and get that sense in our mind of it as being a part of our life. And we don't have to always see the image of it. We just have to get into the feeling of it. In other words, we must take possession of it by living with it in our mind and our heart. As Collier writes, hold it in your thoughts, focus your mind upon it, believe that you have it. And your higher self, that is consciousness, will pour out its vital force into it and bring it into being. <clears throat> God is but another name for the invisible, everywhere present source of all things. We know this. This is the truth. And this is the truth as God is all in all, in and through all things. Or as Isaiah revealed, besides me, that's besides me, besides God, there is none other. There is no thing. Besides God, there is no thing. God has given us infinite power, intelligence, and awareness. But most of us fail to vision our good beyond the single picture or image in our mind. And we can read in the book of Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. How much do we want the thing that we pray for, dream about, hold as a desire in our heart? We will know how much by the amount of time and energy that we give to our visioning, our imagining, our prayers. Our thoughts about it, our focused concentration on it. But our visioning and imagining and prayer must be established in having it, not wanting it, having it. We don't get what we want. We get what we believe to be true for us because God responds to us by corresponding to that which we believe to be true. And what we believe to be true for us is the fully developed consciousness of having it, of having it. Let's know this is so. Let's go back to those words of Isaiah. They're actually tremendously powerful words. This is from Isaiah 55, 10 through 11. This is the English Standard Version of the Holy Bible. Like I said before, there's probably over 50-some different versions of the Holy Bible, but this is the English Standard Version. It reads, As for as the rain and the snow come down from heaven... And do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. 
and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Those are powerful words. We need to take that into our mind and say, if Isaiah, way back in those primitive times, way back in those times when people thought the earth was flat, if Isaiah could bring forth this idea, and this idea has been sustained throughout history, then I must know it's the truth. I must know it's the truth. Prosperity is not limited to time or place, the great Robert Collier tells us in his book, The Secret of the Ages. It manifests when and where there is consciousness to establish it. So we got to get into the consciousness of having the thing. If you want a new car, go out and look at new cars. If you want new clothes, go look at new clothes. See yourself in them. Take the time to sit and see yourself driving the new car, wearing the new clothes. See yourself in that new home, whatever it may be. If it's a, if it's a, a, a one-bedroom condo or if it's a 15-bedroom mansion, see yourself living in the way in which you know is yours, yours to live in divine in the, by the divine right. That means by consciousness. Start getting in the, to the awareness of the greater things still. Start feeling the joy of life. Say, I am feeling the joy of life. Someone came to Dr. O.C. Smith one time and said, Dr. O.C., how do you, how, what does it take to be happy? And Dr. O.C. said, just tell yourself, I am happy. Say, I am happy. And say, I am happy enough. And pretty soon that happiness will just explode from within your mind, your heart, and your soul, and you'll feel that happiness. Say, I am prosperous. I am, I am full of life. I am enjoying life. I am one with all that is good. And start feeling the joy of knowing it. As you sow, so shall you reap. We need to understand this is the law of compensation, not a law of karma, not a law of, oh, your, your, your sinful ways are going to catch up with you. This is a law of compensation. As you sow, sow the good things into your mind. Sow the good ideas into your mind. Sow the good images into your mind. Sow the good thoughts into your mind. As you sow, so shall you reap. Concentrate and think upon things that you want, <clears throat> not on things which you don't want. Think of abundance, of opulence, of plenty, of position, of harmony and growth, of health and happiness. If you do not outwardly see abundance, <clears throat> know that you have it within, and that in due time it will manifest itself. The greatest shortcut to prosperity is to live it. Prosperity attracts. Live it in your mind. Poverty repels. The, re the secret of prosperity lies in so vividly imaging it in your own mind that you literally exude prosperity. You feel prosperous. You look prosperous. And the result is that before long, you are prosperous. You are prosperous. But Collier tells us, <clears throat> what, what that good thing, whatever it may be, that promotion at work, that raise, that increase in finances, that, that higher, higher result with your, your invested stocks, whatever it is, the stocks you've invested in, whatever it may be, that good thing uh, uh, that brings forth a greater health in your life, a greater happiness, wherever it is, it manifests when and where there is a consciousness to establish it. And so we must establish the consciousness. We must learn to vividly image things in our mind. See ourselves the way we want to be. See ourselves the way we have the freedom to choose ourselves to be. And know that we have the freedom. God has given us the inherent liberty and freedom to choose. I am. What is it that I am? I get to say whatever it is that comes after that I am. I can say I am happy and prosperous and joyful. I am filled with enthusiasm for life. Call your rights, hold it in your thought, focus your mind upon it, believe that you have it and your higher self, that is that consciousness that's in tune with the infinite good, will pour out its vital force into it and bring it into being. God is but another name for the invisible, everywhere present source of all things. God is all in all, in and through all things. And as Isaiah revealed, besides me, that is, besides God, there is none other. There is no thing. God is life. God is the life of everything. God is the 
expression of livingness and givingness and forgivingness that moves through our mind, our heart, and our soul. And we must remember to have that vision of ourselves, see ourselves the way God sees us, see ourselves the way we were meant to be. Where there is no vision, the people perish. We, leave, we, we read in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people pre- pre- perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Get a vision of yourself. Get an image of yourself, being healthy and happy, being prosperous, feeling love and being and giving love. Feel the joy of life. There is a power within you that can lift your life to its highest level. And the mystical Jesus, the mystical Ernest Holmes, the mystical Isaiah, all these people, the wonderful Robert Collier, they're all telling us, These things you can do, and greater things still you can do. Believe these things. Believe on them. Believe Jesus when he says that greater things still is yet yours to do, yours to be, yours to have. Trust in Jesus. Open your mind. Open your mind to the infinite. All that the Father hath is mine. But I can only experience so much of it, or I'll be totally overwhelmed with the goodness. And that's the truth for you and the truth for me and the truth for all of us. We must choose. And so it is. Amen.